Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War I, and we are playing one of the two operational uh, battles in the game. Most of Strategic Command World War I is sort of a grand campaign looking at the entire First World War in two-week turns. However, this is a game that we're going to be playing of the Ludendorff Offensive scenario, which are two-day turns and uh, look just on the Western Front during uh, 1918, the spring offensives of the German army in 1918. It is May of 1918. Our offensives have been underway a little bit less than two months, and we are closing in on Paris. We're just on the outskirts of Paris. Uh, the Americans and Italians have thrown increasing numbers of troops in to try and help the French and British out to stop us, but we are just two hexes away from Paris. That being said, there are considerably strong forces in the city itself, which could try and attack and throw us back. They did destroy one of our three divisions up front there last turn, uh, and I would say both the 103rd and the 12th divisions here are vulnerable in their current positions and could be hit as well. Uh, and so it'll be interesting to see if the enemy attacks me there. I'm kind of tempted to pull the 103rd back into this trench line. Maybe we will do that. Just to lessen the risk of them being attacked. We know that the enemies have uh, a, an Italian detachment, which in of itself isn't too much wor too too uh, worrisome. But there's an agglomated division, which I'm assuming is an American division in French uh, service. There's an American division, and then there's another French division here in Paris, as well as a colonial division here to the north. So I am thinking we'll pull these guys back into that trench line, and they'll instantly get uh, entrenched at level 2. That does leave the 12th division out here a little bit exposed on its own, uh, but that's just the reality of it. I think it's it's worth the, the slight withdrawal. Meanwhile, there are strong enemy forces to the north of our drive on Paris up near Senelis. Uh, the British have a crack division here in the 19th. The, the Portuguese have display, di dispatched a division there. There's an Italian division, a French division, and another British division. Uh, we do have three divisions in our Campania to support that flank, but it is a pretty risky situation. We've pulled our troops back behind these rivers here to, uh, to give them a, a better defensive position. Uh, the British are nearing getting surrounded near Chawnee. You can see here there's at least uh, six enemy divisions, almost in like a, a hexagonal fort situation. Uh, we don't have enough troops to surround them and, and you know, whittle them down. But there is a considerable British force here and not really good supply line options here. There's no rail line into them. They could drive west and counterattack the 213th division here. Um, but there's they're really kind of, I think, in a little bit of a bad supply situation. And you can see these guys are all sub five supply meanwhile in the sort of central northern uh, uh france and, and belgium there are some places that were a little bit vulnerable to the west of do du do uh there's a division here the um the 32nd saxon division which is very vulnerable to attack the 58th reserve division could also and the 10th bavarians the french or the, or the british could definitely break through on one or two hex fronts uh, and potentially threaten our position in the north we're very thin up there but i'm hoping that they keep pulling troops south to try and deal with the situation around paris to the east of paris we've got some armor and some infantry here trying to hold the french in position here uh, we also have some american divisions we even have the american first big red one division the second canadian division and the 161st french divisions cut off just to the south of reims and surrounded we may begin reducing this pocket of three enemy divisions next turn if we can hold the pocket we also have a french division nearly destroyed and surrounded at valmy so that's a fourth enemy division surrounded we just finished uh reducing very done after all these years we finally were able to defeat the the french at verdun and have pushed the line south we're a little bit thin here as well a lot of these units are fought out and sort of worn out if you will uh, but still i think we're in a generally good position there we can push these three fresh divisions forward pull some of these guys back and sort of refit them uh, and maybe strengthen our drive on paris or, or drive further and try and go for tool and nancy uh, the British have an armored division here, or armored corps, that we've badly battered, but they've really thinned out our line here along the French positions here, and we are pretty vulnerable, but we've seen a considerable and steady uh, withdrawal of French troops to the west toward Paris out of this line here near the German border. The one place that isn't true is near Colmar and Mulhausen, where the French keep pushing troops in. They've lost several divisions down here, but they keep threatening these national morale objectives to try and, uh, you know, in invade Germany perhaps and, and stop our drive on Paris that way. So we'll see if the Allies continue their considerable counterattacks to try and pause our momentum or if they begin shifting troops for a new defensive line near Paris. 
That's the situation right now here in May of 1918. We've already finished our turn, so let's go ahead and move forward to the next turn and see what the Allies have in store for us. The 8th Bavarian Division here suffers some attrition here south of Valmy. The 44th Division suffers some attrition here to the west of Colmar. More U.S. troops are deployed in French service at Orléans, so it seems like more and more French troops are, uh, are being, uh, or American troops, are being um, enrolled in the, uh, in the French uh, army. Meanwhile, the Treaty of Bucharest, Romania withdraws from the war. I don't know what impact that has on anything other than that probably hurts the Allies because they were on the side of the Allies. Yeah, Alex, glad you're enjoying it. Honestly, I think this game is pretty easy to, to play, personally. So the enemy's pulling a lot of troops back, a lot of operational movement here. We can hear a lot of trains and, and shifting troops all over the front, presumably strengthening their position near Paris, I would assume. But also, a couple of these forward positions, we just saw uh, a British division rail in near Nancy. An American division tried to cut the rail south of uh, that pocket near Valmy. Some French bombers are trying to hit the uh, sort of head of our uh, invasion task force moving toward Paris. They're also bombing our troops to the east of Chauncey. It'll be interesting to see if that strong British force there tries to make an attack. Uh, to the west of Toul, heavy bombardment on one of our lead divisions south of Verdun. The French are going to go ahead and attack it here and probably destroy this division here. That's down to two strength. Meanwhile, uh, French division is attacking some of our artillery that we moved in near Senelis. Pretty heavy casualties there. That division was exposed. They should always be behind the front lines, but I was trying to rail them forward and get them into the action, and then it was just a hex I had to move them into to, to do that. It looked like they might have actually brought supplies into Valmy here. I think I saw a very narrow front line into those, those troops that were badly cut off. Meanwhile, they kept keeping that division in the south surrounded. We've got a half-strength division surrounded. Blood for the Blood God. Thank you very much for the resub there. Okay, some British attacks here. Seems like a relatively quiet turn so far on the offensive side. The Allies usually alternate turns where they take heavy casualties attacking me. Then they usually pause for a turn to replenish their losses. This feels like a replenishment turn because that went by really fast. Meanwhile, we're going to get the 44th Landvar Division. They didn't liberate the troops in Valmy. I could have sworn I saw saw troops that looked like they might have been getting supply there. Maybe I was looking at the troops near Reims, but the, the divisions there are cut off as well. So let's go ahead and finish these troops off. 53rd Division, only one to two, huh? These enemy troops are still dug in. So we move the 50th Reserve Division here. We're going to attack one to two. Okay. We'll attack with the, the level six strength division here. Then we've got this fourth U.S. Marine Brigade. By the way, what is, what is the U.S. strength now? They're at 10. The French are at 65. All right, so we've got this fourth Marine Brigade here, which I'm going to go ahead and attack. Destroy as well. Can these guys shift these entrenchments? They can't. All right, so we'll move this 10th strength unit down here in front of the second U.S. division. There's a French cavalry division down there. Okay. We're going to reinforce these troops here of the 9th Reserve and then the 81st. Oh, the 81st can't reinforce, can they? They don't have enough supply, I guess. Let's reinforce this headquarter unit. And this artillery unit, I think. Oh, these guys already attacked, that's why. Okay, meanwhile, we've got this th group of three divisions that are surrounded south of Reims that we definitely want to try and finish off here before the first detachment of the U.S. military can come to their aid. So what's one, one, and two? So we're going to go after the, the one supply units unit first.
All right, so we finished off that first division here. That was the, the, the French division that we just knocked out. Go after the second Canadian division here. So wipe that division out. I don't think we can knock out the American division here. We don't have enough strength. So we'll shift some troops around a little bit. I should have reconned these guys. Maybe I get a slightly better attack odd here. I think we still have two units that can attack. We go one to three, which would be nice. I mean, we'll, we'll weaken them considerably, but I'll just let their supplies continue to get worse. Okay, so we knocked out a French division of Valmy, a French and a Canadian division near Reims. Take a look here. The French are at 64 units, the British 50, the Americans 9. All right, we need to reinforce some of these units. God, these, these guys can't even reinforce very much. Um, let's do this. Let's pull these guys back. Try and bombard this 127th division in the front. There you go. Knocked him out. All right, so we knocked out another French division there. We pulled back the badly battered divisions, that, so hopefully no, no one gets killed this coming turn. We'll move the 242nd down to support. Let's reinforce the third. Well, they can only reinforce one. I really need to get this, this headquarters unit further, further south to support these guys. Trying to reinforce everybody that I can on this. Actually, I should use the reinforcement tool, which is down here. This armored core, I'm pretty sure, reinforced last turn. Could try and cut this another pocket off here. I have the strength to do much there. These guys must be almost dead, right? All right, so we've pulled back from the French border here in the south. I don't know. The, su the southern situation is a little bit dicey. It makes me pretty nervous. Let's move these guys north. I don't want them to drive east and then try and attack us there. Let's also reinforce this headquarter unit. I really don't want to lose Moolhouse and Colmar, though. Um, these are attack bombers. So they're not recon. We want to try and... So what's these guys' entrenchment? I don't really know how ground bombers work. Do they reduce entrenchments? They apparently do. And substantially hinder enemy morale. All right. Maybe I should have gone for these British troops who weren't even entrenched. I'm tempted to move this division down because I want to try and attack this enemy armor. But I feel like that's not a good idea. The problem is the enemy armor is going to be a bear to deal with. But we'll entrench. We'll spend the turn entrenching on this front. Okay. 
Okay. Meanwhile, we've got two more divisions up near Verdun where I may want to rail them somewhere else, but we'll hang on for a moment before we do that. Okay, let's go after division. Well, these guys aren't even entrenched. Let's reinforce these guys to full. Just another detachment down there. Uh, can these guys reinforce fully? They can. Can I move this? I can do that. All right, so we're going to move this armor toward the Paris front to go after the 15th Colonial Division, which attacked our artillery. Then we're going to finish them off with a 38th Division and move them into that gap. Pull this artillery south to prevent it from the same thing happening again. And then we'll move our infantry around here on this front. These are all divisions. Well, that's a detachment, actually. Let's recon it to enemy interceptors. That should be fine. I've got escorts. Okay. One to three. Really? Just that? I guess I had thought that might accomplish more. All right, well, we didn't even finish that detachment. We, we bloodied it pretty badly, but we didn't finish it. All right, those guys are going to stay in position here. These three divisions I'm going to move west to try and lessen the threat on the flank of Paris. So I'm going to try and break through this line here to that effect. My recon bombers are going to hit this British division on the flank. We'll go with heavy ground attack bombers next turn or next, next attack. So we've reconned them. Now we can go ahead and try and bomb them with our heavy bombers. Now we'll go ahead and hit them with artillery Move the 5th Division forward a hex. Really? Still two to nothing? Well, fuck. Is it because they're crack troops or something? really don't want to attack those guys with those odds. The 12th British Division. It's like a bear. Can we operate any of our artillery forward to that area? We can. We can get these guys over here. So we can crack them next turn, I think. Trench. So if the enemy does attack here... We now have a four-division front here, just north of our Paris spearhead. And I think my intent here is to clear these guys and then turn some of these units loose moving south. We'll entrench these troops so they can hold in place on their way to Paris right now. Move this headquarters unit forward as well to help with the supply situation. So next turn, the supply is going to be even better. Not great, but better on that front. Okay. 
Let's move that artillery. Probably going to operate those guns. Let's also go ahead and operate these two divisions from Verdun. Or at least one of them to the, f to the Paris front. These guys should be okay if they don't get overwhelmed this next turn so they can reinforce. Got reserve divisions here and here. The risk is over here in the east. That's why we've largely kept those ground bombers because they seemed pretty instrumental in holding back the British armor. Can I pull this? These guys don't have any headquarters units really near them. I'd love to operate them, but I think I already moved them. Okay, meanwhile, these British troops here, their supply situation's bad and the weather is bad. So we can actually attack the 14th Division on pretty good terms. Swap these units around and finish them off. All right, so we destroyed that British Division near Trawnee. Really bad intel on what's toward Roy. So I don't think I want to advance those divisions. Just not enough intel in that direction. Reinforce these guys. Along the lines who suffered heavy casualties. What is this division here? The 11th? Um, where can we place, because we do have one more new division, the 44th. I probably place them in Lille and shift troops north, because I do need to block this, this gap. Fortunately, they won't be... Well, I can place them in the front line, but they'll probably get overwhelmed and killed because they go in with really low readiness and morale. There should be trenches there. It doesn't say there are, but there should be. We can move... Shift our artillery there to be... Well, they won't even be able to... All right, we'll swap the headquarters unit there so they'll have some artillery cover. Okay, so that's probably going to do it for this turn. I don't see any other opportunistic areas to attack. Again, I may want to press further in the north. It does seem like the British line's getting thinned out there a bit. Nine Americans, 49 British, 61 French. The French are up to 80 divisions lost. Jesus. I don't want to move them here because I'm guessing there's a unit here at Chani, and if we do, we'll be immediately thrown into, into a battle. I think we'll move another headquarters unit west, though, to try and support the drive on, on Paris next turn. But I think that's it for this turn. We have 144 points left, which isn't really enough for a lot of heavy units. We could spend it on some anti-aircraft defenses, which might not be a terrible idea. We could... We can't even purchase a replacement to the 11th Division, which was lost. I mean, we can, but it's not an upgraded unit. I guess we might as well do that, just so we get something. Next turn, we'll get another armored unit, which will be nice. It'll actually be a more advanced armored unit. The AV-7, I think it's more. Maybe it's actually not. Either way, we can upgrade it. So next turn, we will get uh, a bomber unit, an armored unit, and four divisions, it looks like. So this is going to be a huge turn in terms of reinforcements next turn to shore things up. But that's the situation right now. So let's move ahead to the next turn, which will bring us into mid-May 1918. 
and see if we can't resume our offensive here to the north and eventually toward Paris itself. That division of ours that's cut off suffers some attrition losses. Paris is hit by a massive strike wave. A strike wave with us like within two hexes of Paris. The citizens are unhappy. Okay, that U.S. detachment moved west. A couple of units reinforcing. We really need to reinforce on that southern front there. We gave up Alterich. So that is a major, in, in a sense, a major victory for the French just because they are, you know, they are succeeding in uh, taking back some of Alsace-Lorraine. Meanwhile, a lot of Allied air activity here. Presumably, this is going to be one of those heavy offensive turns. We'll see, though. A lot of heavy bombers on there, and we do have some escorts in and around the uh, Paris bulge, but not enough elsewhere, it seems. The Belgians may be launching an offensive here in Belgium. The British could also be launching an offensive against that new division we just placed, which we said was probably going to get killed, and they are. So that division, oh my god, they got rocked. They lost 60% of their strength on that first attack and got wiped out on the second. So they, they tore a hole in that division's asshole real fast. Meanwhile, that British division, that crack division, tried to attack our troops across the river. Remember, we didn't attack, and they lost two casualties. We lost none. So that was a pretty good result for us. Heavy attacks southeast of Paris as well. We do have some defensive artillery there, but they're trying to line up against that flank division. There's a bit of a gap here near Lafayette, or however you pronounce that town's name. Heavy attacks near Compsri. Our division's pushed back there. Our cutoff division in the south is destroyed. The, Br the Belgians do attack that division where they had all of that artillery firing, and they're going to drive it back and probably destroy it. They do with Belgian cavalry that tries to pursue. The good news is we've got four divisions coming, so hopefully we're, uh, we're okay. Move their division into the gap there. We might be able to counterattack and pinch that, that gap off. Oh, shit. Now they've got artillery in the south. Mark 7. The British upgraded their tanks. Oh, we had enough trouble with them as they were. All right, so Lille's damage from bombing, 44th Landvers destroyed, 44th Division and 8th Division all destroyed. We lost three divisions that turn. We've got a bunch of reinforcements arriving, but I'm going to wait to deploy them until after I figure out how we want to proceed or how, how our initial turns and attacks go. So this division here, the 79th, is the one that got hit really hard by the French there. Good news is the 51st, which leads that position here, in a real rough spot. So we'll knock that unit out. Pull this division. We're going to pull this guy back. Attack this detachment. Nearly destroyed it. Okay. Shift these troops around a little bit, maybe. All right, let's finish off this surrounded American division. Really, zone of control prevents it? Hmm. Either way, they could move into the vicinity. Fourth Division, we're going to attack mainly just to prevent it from attacking next turn. Okay. All right, so we finished that American Division off here. 
all these divisions south to attack this American detachment. Wipe that guy out. And you could say we've got a bit of a breach going on here. 233rd. I don't know if there's any enemy troops that are going to come through this, like, swamp river area. I'm guessing not. 48th Division, let's, let's recon you and then, and then hit you with artillery. Got him. Another enemy division destroyed. <laughs> French in a swamp? You mean frogs? Good one. Lol. All right. So I'll move that guy further forward. Let's headquarter back on a road. Let's reinforce these troops. All right, this new enemy line formed near bar le -Duch. Since they've pulled back a bit, we can reinforce, I think, most of these guys. Close to full strength, or to full strength, for some of the units. I am curious what's out that way, so let's see. Can we move you guys forward? Again, you're going to be in a bit of a salient, but... Just trying to hope that we could see what was up there, but guess not. All right. Do I have no more money? Yeah, I do have money. Right, reinforce that division that was hit. Let's try and attack this. I should have hit these guys from the air first. Let's actually hit the tanks. Maybe they'll they'll pause if they take heavy enough aerial punishment. All right, so we got that division. Throw one of our new divisions in here. It'll be in a in a trench line here, so it should be slightly better off. Also, the enemy will only be able to come at it from one direction. I'm guessing they'll go after the weaker units to the north that just attacked all along that line. Very curious to see what the enemy has that's going to come at us near Toll. <clears throat> Meanwhile, reinforcing in the south here near Colmar and Mulhouse. We're going to shift one of these divisions out of Colmar down to the south toward Mulhouse where that enemy offensive is coming. need something to help me break through the trench lines in the south that's the problem is i don't i've got a bunch of troops and i've actually got a pretty strong numerical advantage i just have no way to overwhelm them right they actually pulled back away from paris this turn that's interesting all right let's do this let's hit the 12th british division which suffered two casualties last turn we'll hit them again with recon bombers first these guys are crack troops. They're level one experience. Go ahead and hit them with heavy bombers. We'll go ahead and hit them with artillery. We've got seven shells here. They only have two entrenchments. Attack round told to throw the booth at me. Probably. Probably. 
I will finish that enemy division off at Claremont. And you can see we're into the rear, into the open. That was a little bit more aggressive than I usually go with that division, but we're going to throw all of these headquarter units and this air unit into, uh, into panic, hopefully. Meanwhile, we've got one more recon bomber over here, so I'm going to go for the 29th division to try and widen that breach. Go ahead and hit it with artillery here also. Their morale is bad. We've got enough ammo to, to press that advantage home. All right, we'll save the one remaining round. We'll swap these guys with this division down here, the 6th division. And we knocked them out. And we widened the breach. So we now have three divisions flanking this entire enemy position near Chantilly. With no enemy units that can counterattack, at least in sight. There could be some troops up here near Mondir and that could threaten our flank. So I'll probably deploy some new reserves here into Campania where we just had troops before. I'm going to move our rail gun south toward Paris, I think, or at least down here. That was a very good result for us there. Yeah, this is a horrific situation for the for the Allies. We're within basically 20 miles of Paris, and we've also got three divisions breaking through their defensive line to the north. Again, they may pull troops out of Amiens and hit us in the flank. We're a little bit exposed there. Can we deploy troops? How far forward can we deploy them? We can deploy them here. All right, let's do that. Deploy two divisions at Campania, so new divisions deploying forward. I don't really want them to get attacked, but again, there's something here. So that if the enemy tries to rush forward, I can't entrench them, unfortunately. New troops can't be entrenched. I'm really tempted to push with the 213th Division out this direction to the west. But there's just too many unknowns out that far. Should we go after the 36th Division here? Slowly whittle down this pocket of six enemy divisions. Or maybe the 66th is a little bit more exposed. All right, so we destroyed another enemy division here. It's not just about destroying enemy divisions that are, that are important for the win. It's also about you know, doing enough to pull the enemy back, I think. Or doing enough to force the enemy to pull back. It also shortens my line there so I can get some troops in into their rear. So we have effectively cut this group off now, especially if I advance these troops north here. So we now have created a pocket of five enemy divisions here near Chantilly. Probably need to deploy one more division here in this gap at Sosson so we can make sure they don't... I don't know. I don't, I'm scared about the idea of these guys trying to pull west down this rail line, but where we're at now, we should be fairly well positioned. I mean, the 213th division could definitely get cut off, but we'll see. Uh, meanwhile, they also did destroy this division up here near Lille, so let's go ahead and bombard these troops. F3 Nador, thanks for well, thanks for showing up. Hal 900 Supercomputer, thanks for the follow. All right, can we pinch this division off? We'll go two to five. 
two to four, destroy it. And then we immediately get pulled into combat. Oh, these guys are going to die. I don't have enough artillery there. Meanwhile, this enemy cavalry division, which finished off one of our other divisions, is going to get rocked real fast. They're entrenched, but their entrenches are facing the wrong direction. All right, let's do this. These guys, we're going to have a two pole front. I need to put two divisions here. At least. And I can't rail anyone in. I don't have any more fresh infantry divisions. I got this tank core, but as far as I'm concerned, I would rather the tanks be on the Paris front to support the drive there. We actually, actually, we have one division at Verdun. Let's rail them north. 15th Bavarians. We can put them right into the front, too. Not that that's a great idea, but it's not as bad as deploying brand new troops that way. Um, do we have any other units in reserve that didn't move or didn't attack around this way? I think most of those guys all have got this division, the 192nd Saxons. Throw them into the line, too. And then if I have one more division, I could probably pull this artillery back and throw them into Lille. They won't be dug in or anything. I do have the 123rd division. So we'll throw them into Lille. Not that this is a great strategic redeployment to the north, but it is what it is. Most of these troops down here are already reinforced. Some of these guys didn't have any reinforcements available to them. Let's move this headquarters unit. Love to move down and attack this American artillery. Which makes me nervous because I don't have any points left to entrench. Sean Mack have eaten a lot of casualties, really, is what it is. They broke through a couple times, but they didn't have the infantry to support their their breakthrough, really. Really need to destroy this unit south here. That'll that it helps so much. We still have one more unit to deploy, right? Heavy bombers. I need another headquarters unit there. That Paris breakthrough situation is not great from a from a headquarters perspective. Reinforce these guns to full. All right, they can shift here. So we'll attack this 30th division on the outskirts of Paris. Drive them back. I don't really want to advance there. Let's do this. That should give me recon on the city, right? No? Uh, shit.
And we know there's a unit here in Paris. It's not unoccupied. So I guess I just won't move there. Well, strong enough that if I move in outside of entrenchments, it'll hurt. Let's put it that way. Um, okay. Overall, the situation is looking promising. We've got 35 points left, which isn't really enough to do anything. So we're going to go ahead and end the turn. Move forward to May 20th, which will be the, uh, my next turn. Further U.S. troops to, to deploy in British service at deal. So the, uh, or the U.S. is just filling up the allied ranks as they take massive casualties, just millions of U.S. doughboys probably getting deployed in a way that historically they, I don't think they were, um, but uh, to, to massive losses to the allies, they've got to replenish these, these losses. They moved a division in here toward Bouveres, which is along our flank there. And while they pulled some of that artillery back, Probably due to the fact that we advanced that one unit adjacent to the American artillery there. So maybe that'll preempt any attack in the south where that artillery is, or that, that tank unit is. Several other units attacking the last turn are now reinforcing. Railing troops near that uh, new British pocket we formed. The British troops that are surrounded are entrenching. They're not, at least one of the units there I saw was digging trenches. Which is interesting. That lead division to the west of Lille's is 100% going to get destroyed. Meanwhile, heavy enemy air activity into the pocket here, or into the Paris bulge. I'm proud of that unit for taking two attacks to die. <laughs> they also did a fair bit of damage on the enemy. All right, we lost another division there to the west of Cambrai. So two divisions destroyed. A fair bit of redeployment. All those headquarters units that we had spotted last turn obviously got got the hell out of Dodge. Generals generals have no desire to, to fight there. <laughs> Just like, nope, we're getting out of here, boys. Uh, meanwhile, we lost two divisions destroyed there. We've got two more incoming. But, all right, so technically this division is on our flank. Um, what about these guys who are surrounded? So their supply situation is bad. But they're still entrenched, which makes their defeat a little bit more challenging. So we'll knock out that first of the enemy divisions here. Let's strengthen our encirclement here by moving these troops up. That was perhaps foolish. Yeah, more than a little foolish. Now I can't keep these guys surrounded. Unless nobody can move there because the zone's a control. Ah, I was trying to just weaken their cavalry. Stupid THG, stupid. Well, we could go for the wider flanking maneuver out here. I can't move anybody down there, huh? Okay. Potato Peddler, thanks for the follow. Captain Flatbird, thank you for the resub there. Two months now. Appreciate the support. 
Um, all right, so you can actually attack at two to five. Do it. The interesting thing is if they do move these from Roy or West, they, they can get themselves out of the imminent encirclement. I'm not sure their supply situation gets dramatically better, though. Can these guys work here? They can. So let's pull back here, move these. No, they can't. Damn it, zone of control rules. Can I undo that? Undo the withdrawal? No, I can't. All right. Well, just botching this whole turn. Um, what about in the north here? Let's destroy this 31st division here that kind of got out ahead of itself, I think. Got it. Enemy division destroyed. You know, all this enemy detachment here. A little bit exposed also. So we'll wipe that detachment out. British losing heavy casualties. Strengthens our, our line, I think. Let's pull this five unit out, swap in with a eight. Quantif, thanks for the follow. Appreciate the support as well. All right, can we hit any of these guys? Oh, we can hit them. Not quite as hard as I would like. Reinforce those troops and these guys. So we're not going to attack in the north, although I would like to go for Newport. I think I'd need to move some artillery up that way. And those those balloons got wrecked. All right, what are these troops here? The fourth Australian. Well, let's preserve that artillery. Okay, so this pocket lost a division, another one badly crippled. We also destroyed what one or two divisions up here in the north. The British are at fifty-one units. The French are at sixty-two. The Americans are at ten. Seems like the bulk of the American troops at this point are actually getting poured into. Um, French or British units. I think they just started deploying into British units this turn. All right, we're going to move these tanks forward one to four. And we shattered the 19th British division. We get a two to four here. Can we recon them? We'll get hit by enemy fighters, but we've got escorts. Continue that flanking maneuver of the enemy position up here if we can d deal with these guys. The first amaglamented division, so those are... Americans, I believe. We'll finish these guys off at Beauvau, or however you pronounce that. These guys will hold the flank, I think. Although this, this is pretty open down here. But you can see we've got a wide, sweeping maneuver down here. Let's actually pull the ninth land var back a little bit because we've got this enemy position totally outflanked as we swing down toward Paris. All right, we're going to reinforce these guys to full. We're going to operate this division up toward Campania to secure the flank there. From potential disaster. We'll take the 203rd Division from to the west also to continue strengthening this attack on Paris. Engine 808, thanks for the follow. Uh, meanwhile, 
And we can keep the pressure up north of Paris here with this artillery. I'd like the, the assistance of these four divisions swinging for the actual attack on Paris. I don't think I can take it with just two divisions. So that's why I'm attacking up here. Destroy that Italian detachment. Reinforce this armor to full strength. We'll get some elite reinforcements for these guys here because they're so good. That should help on the offensive. Turn them back into storm troopers or whatever. Uh, we've got the one heavy bomber unit. Well, that that third division for Italy is pretty badly mauled. Italy's down to two units. I think they originally deployed four. I think they've pretty much lost the entire force. Um, set these guys with heavy bombers at Chateau Thierry. Forty second US division gets wrecked. Okay. Let's reinforce these guys to full strength. All right, so we're threatening to flank Mon Montreal, or however you pronounce that also. I'd like to reinforce my fighters here. They've been doing a yeoman's work, keeping our front line a little bit safe, I guess, from enemy bombers. This is the base game. There is a mod, so it's included in the base game, but we we're playing the Blue Max mod which is a modification, but it actually ships with the game. You can edit it from inside the, the settings of the game. Well, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of Strategic Command World War One, our Let's Play series that was run on my Twitch channel a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we ran into British armor, pretty strong British armor. We're trying to counterattack it here in the south right now, uh, but we're not going to be able to do enough damage to uh, really cripple it. We are about to cut off this lone French division down here. One thing I will say I've noticed, and you can kind of see it with what's going on right here, is ground attack bombers don't destroy much in the way of tanks, but they do shatter its morale. And that really is something uh, that I didn't notice at the time that I was playing, but is something uh, I think worth keeping in mind if you're facing enemy armor. Uh, with that being said, that is going to do it for today's episode. So I hope you guys did enjoy. Uh, and until next time, as always, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.